Welcome back to Charlotte Motor Speedway. Leader Buddy Lazier is on pit road. Brian Hammonds is there. It's just a routine stop, gentlemen. Full load of fuel, four tires for Buddy Lazier. No problems whatsoever. The work is done, and away he goes. Apparently, Lazier did not stop on the lap 74 caution, so this would be a scheduled stop. On his first tank of fuel, he went 44 laps. 47 laps later, he comes in for this stop, which will drop him from the lead. And Billy Boat, A.J. Foyt's driver, who received the checkered flag at Texas. But Ari Leyendijk ended up with the win after a scoring recheck. Billy Boat is in the lead. There is Boat. He and Davey Hamilton, teammates for A.J. Foyt. That is Scott Sharp's ride. Sharp recovering from a recent incident. Is it tough to watch your own car go around? That sort of makes you want to be in there, but uh, Billy's doing a good job today. He really is. Obviously, they, they've done some good pitch strategy. Sort of surprised Buddy didn't come in when, when everybody else did. You know, it, it, I think it's cost him almost a lap now, and I, he is. I think he's down a lap, so I'm surprised they used that, that decision. But obviously, they gained some track position, but then to have to pit under green again certainly cost them. I think what will happen, though, with Buddy Lazier is for Buddy, this may still be just a four-stop race. And depending on where the caution flags fall, he may end up making up that lap by running one fewer pit stop. That's true. If they could stay on schedule, it might play out for him. Yellow flag. That Mark Dismore very slow down on the track apron. It's the second place car. Dismore is rolling to a stop. Boy, what a shame for Mark. He was having a great day. All the way up to second. The reports are there's some oil down in turn one. And there's smoke from Dismore's car. Obviously, that where it must have come from. Started 10th, got all the way up to second. Boy, it's a real shame for him. Brian Hammonds? It's a blown motor for Mark Dismore. He is done for the day. And it's an ironic thing. He's running so well here today in his Delara chassis. This is the swan song for that chassis because the next time we see Mark Dismore, he'll be in the new Riley Scott chassis in New Hampshire. And that's a neat piece. We got a good look at it yesterday. Has a unique Riley rocker arm front suspension to make easier adjustments. We'll see it in New Hampshire. We'll be back to Charlotte Motor Speedway after this. Halfway at Charlotte Motor Speedway, five leaders, five lead changes, average speed dropped by two caution flags for nine laps, 275 miles per hour. Five cars off the track. Early, Jack Miller and Greg Ray, Ari Leyendijk, handling problems, Vincenzo Suspiri, and an engine for Dismore, taking him out of the top five. Roberto Guerrero did not make a pit stop on this caution. He's the leader. Billy Boat, Jimmy Kite did, Tony Stewart. Kenny Breck is on the tail end of the lead lap, where you'll also find Buddy Lazier. Getting set to go back to green. Guerrero is pretty much by himself. The battle will be for second place. Green flag. That's Guerrero in yellow up on the outside, working around traffic and trying to make sure those cars stay one lap down. Roberto's handling pretty well right now. I think he'll try to run as hard as he can get away from the Billy Boat and, uh, and, and Tony Stewart trying to open up a little bit of a lead right now. Billy Boat running in second. Jimmy Kite keeping close tabs on him as they go back to green on this restart. Guerrero gets away from the field. And Billy Boat to the tail end of that pack. They work around Jim Guthrie. There's Lazier, who is a lap down now to Guerrero. And Tony Stewart. Dorian Torch seems like he's slowing down a bit. I don't know what that is. Down on the bottom of the racetrack in turn one and two. That's trouble. Yeah, I think he might have a problem here. Tony Stewart started on pole, but almost the entire first quarter distance, and he will come pit side this time. Boy, that's a fight for second place. Billy Boat is in a knot of cars. Davey Hamilton just ahead. And Stewart will come to pit lane. The frustrations for Stewart continue. Running at the front of the pack in Texas, two laps to go, blows the engine. He's led every race this year, only one victory, Colorado. This is going to really hurt his points race, that's for sure. 
Motor sounds a little notchy. We can see what they say. Vibration. Was that the motion he was making with like, his hand? Yeah, something to do with the vibration in the front. Maybe he thought he had a tire going down. Mike King? Well, Tony had a bad set of tires, as we told you earlier. He came in, they did replace those tires. He was complaining of a vibration. They did take an opportunity, of course, to top him off on fuel, but it does appear that there was no flat, but just a bad set of tires that time, so Tony Stewart is back out. So the rabbit of the first part of this race becomes the hunter, and Stewart will have to work hard to get back up on the lead lap. Sure will now that he's gone a lap down. Roberto still trying to pull out. He's at almost a six-second lead. He's really working well right now. It's good to see for those guys. Guerrero flashes across the stripe. Right behind him, you'll find the 91 of Buddy Lazier, and Lazier is trying to get back on the lead lap as he just comes into frame there, right behind your race leader. Here's Lazier, and he's coming hard. Oh, he is. This might be one of Buddy's only chances. Uh, he's got Billy Boat and, uh, and, and Jimmy Kite, some of the guys who are more on his pit sequence behind him. He can keep running, get ahead of Roberto, get back on the lead lap. He might become real fast once again in this race. Mike Groff makes an unscheduled pit stop as Lazier runs right in the tire tracks of race leader, the yellow number 21 of Roberto Guerrero. Second place battle shapes up here. Billy Boat, the number one, right in the middle of your screen. Billy Boat chasing his teammate right now. Uh, Davey Hamilton is lapped down. I think Davey's just trying to run as hard as he can also, try to get back on that lead lap. Billy's trying to, of course, hold off Jimmy Kite. The car right behind these two. There's Jimmy Kite, top of your screen. 21 years old. Won the Silver Crown race at the Copper Classic in Phoenix back in January. Say he looks about 16. <laughs> but he drives like a veteran. First time on the high banks of a super speedway and Jimmy Kite on the right side of your screen trying to work past Hamilton. He is your third place car. We saw Davey pull down to the inside of the racetrack coming out of two. I think that was a nice teammate move to let Billy have some free traffic to run. Yeah, then he moved right back up. That was a nice teammate move too. <laughs> moved right back up in front of Kite, but now Jimmy Kite has gone past Hamilton. Kite's aggressive. He really is. His car seems to be working well, and he's standing on the gas. The NRC can pull pulled Billy Boat in. 73,000 fans here at Charlotte Motor Speedway. Not quite a Texas-sized crowd, but a very strong indication that the fans down here in NASCAR country were excited by what they saw from Texas on TV and wanted to see it in person. And these cars under the lights at Charlotte just look blindingly fast on this high bank mile and a half. There's the serial score on Jimmy Kite. He started 13th and has climbed his way to third. There's Billy Boat. So Boat and Kite are sec separated by about 1.3 seconds. Right. But Buddy Lazier right there. Right back of Guerrero. Let's go to the leader's pit, Mike King. John Barnes is the team manager for Pagan Racing. John, we were told that there may have been some contact between Roberto and another car out there. Did he say anything? No, everything's fine with Pins on car. Uh, Roberto's doing a great job. We're just uh, chugging along here, logging some laps. When do you expect to make your last, what might be your last stop of this race? Well, we'll have to make another one, about 135 laps or so, and then 40, and then uh, we'll have another splice right at the end. So Roberto Guerrero, very happy right now. These are the first laps that he has led since the 1996 Indianapolis 500. Mike, when I spoke to him the other day, he had a big smile on his face, and he says, now with this new engine program, now I feel like we're a contender, and I feel like we can win. As we mentioned earlier, Infinity has throttled back their program to work first on reliability, which uh, their technician told me today they believe that they have licked that, and they have closed about half of the power gap to the old Zorora engine, and feel by the end of the season, they'll be back aggressively pursuing teams uh, and be a factor to win in this series once again. Here's Lazier. He's right there on Guerrero. Wow, Roberto really got held up by the car of Sam Schmidt, and there it goes by Lazier. Got his lap back. That's going to be interesting. If he can keep going, it's going to be a real factor in this race. These two cars are flying, though, Mike. They really are. They're pulling away from the second and third place car right now. Last lap for Guerrero, 207 miles per hour. As he looks forward at Buddy Lazier, who is now back on the lead lap with Guerrero, Billy Boat, Jimmy Kite in third, and now Lazier. 
Kenny Breck is one lap down in fifth. Davey Hamilton, Afonso Giafoni, Scott Goodyear, Eddie Cheever, and Tony Stewart are your top ten. CBS Sports coverage of the Visionaire 500 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Welcome back to Charlotte. Mike Joy with Scott Sharp, Brian Hammonds, and Mike King. You're riding with the leader, Roberto Guerrero, over Billy Boat, Jimmy Kite, and Buddy Lazier. While we were away, the 99 of Sam Schmidt went up in smoke out of the race. Kenny Breck unlapped himself from Guerrero, who is now headed for pit road, but then Breck came pit side. So here's your race leader coming in for a scheduled stop. Remember, Guerrero assumed the lead because he did not stop on the lap, last caution flag. This should put Billy Boat back in the lead. He's closely followed by Jimmy Kite. And Guerrero in for service. Mike King's in his pit. Mike? 80 mile an hour pit speed limit. You'll remember is referred to Guerrero pulled it into the pit stop. Doug Barnes and Kevin Conley, Barry Walker, Mick Craig Eaton over the wall, changing the tires on the pit oil machine. Bobby Crump and Mike Charles. They, they took this time, pulled this off, last pit stop. But you can see there's some pretty heavy-duty rubbing going on out here at the Vision Air 500. Pretty heavy contact. Pretty smoky burnout Roberto did, too, coming out. He really stood on it. <laughs> Billy Boat is the new leader. And Jimmy Kite's right there behind him. Boy, able to run. Uh, I think Jimmy's got just as good a car right now. He's been trailing Billy for a number of laps. This is going to be a big battle, I think. Jimmy may have one advantage. He doesn't know how tough super speedway racing is supposed to be. He's never done it. <laughs> Ryan Evans can update the second place car. Well, as if you couldn't tell, Jimmy Kite is awfully happy with his race car. He was complaining of a small push, but during his last pit stop, they made an air pressure adjustment, and he is flat out flying now and very happy with the car. First to second, there's the gap. Both these drivers very aggressive, very much stand on the gas. Uh, at this point in the race, you have to think uh, Billy's happy. You know, there's a little over, a uh, little over halfway now, almost two thirds way. It's important now. Track position is very important. It'll be. I don't think Billy will give up the lead here without a big fight. Billy Boat, 31 years old, has a bachelor's in finance from Arizona State. He's building his own cars at the age of 16. Built high performance exhaust systems when he's not behind the wheel of a race car. Started racing motorcycles at age five on the dirt track. Getting the brakes through traffic is going to be most important here. That's going to really see the lead either shrink or grow, depending on who can get through there the best. Listening to Scott Sharp, who's the regular driver of that number one car that's in the lead and the co champion of this series one year ago. You gonna see you back at uh, Las Vegas, perhaps? Maybe at Las Vegas, yeah. Taking a little bit of a break right now and uh, make, make sure everything heals up, but Billy's doing a good job. AJ obviously set the car up well. They ran super well at Texas and uh, expected that the nature of the two tracks being similar, they would run well here. Billy Boat, another example of the IRL ladder program. Here's a fellow who's an expert in midgets. He was the Western States Midget Champion, won the Chili Bowl, won the Copper World Classic. His race sprint cars now gets a shot to move up into the IRL machines, and he's done well. You had a completely different path to the IRL. Well, I sure did. Coming from closed wheel Trans Am type cars, I spent most of my career in. Uh, not exactly the, uh, the, the maybe the approved way to, to the top of the IRL, but uh, it's uh, it's been a great opportunity for me and it's super run for AJ. So Billy Boat, driving for A.J. Foyt, leads Jimmy Kite, Buddy Lazier, and Afonso Giafoni here at Charlotte. 